Central Station, at the heart of Glasgow for 140 years. Meet the people who make the station work. Running over 950 trains a day for 32 million passengers a year. Every day there's always some challenges. I've got good optimism every day. You have to have as a station manager. There's one thing I hate is an unhappy passenger. It's supposed to look like it's going to look clockwork. That's because we're really good at it. You guys, you get through the wide gate over there, please. Thank you. Organised chaos. <laughs> Let me make it work. Central to Glasgow. That's Glasgow Central. I'm ready for my close up now, Mr. Dunia. No job's too big or small. So Monday is Pigeon Check Day. I'm going to count pigeons. Day and night, for one long summer, we follow the people working all hours to keep the station on track. This time on Inside Central Station. Guys, Florida train station, guys, this week. This weekend, we've got Ed Sheeran playing at Hamden. So, crowd-wise, it's at 10 to 14,000 people. Because my dad was in the railway, he would smell of the trains. I used to sniff, sniff his uniform, I loved it. You told us to go to platform eight. I think that's the biggest thing in this job is keep yourself calm. I bet you thought we did nothing, eh? They're coming in, then they're coming in for a journey, so bottle of water and enjoy your journey. They go through bottle of water. Round trees, fruit pasto, a twister. I think that's some sort of fab. I love one now, it's too warm. <laughs> they're melting, <laughs> I can feel them already. May 2018, the start of a heat wave that became one of Scotland's hottest summers in years. The Glaswegians aren't good at dealing with heat because we don't get it very often. <laughs> Oh, it's unusual. I dropped a wee bottle of water. Have a nice journey. Oh, there you go. Glasgow Central is much busier than it usually is at this time of day. Thanks to the heat, a few hundred teenagers have turned up wanting to let off steam. No paparazzi! Guys, guys, please go on. Right, it's the front of 14. It's got about, uh, I would say, about 100, 150 went on it. We've been given the heads up that there's a lot of the youngsters heading down to the coast. They usually do a, a Facebook um, page to say that there's a party on at Irvine or Troon. They start heading down in vast numbers, so today's one of them. Study leave is happening, so we thought no. we'd uh, have a wee break, break and go to Irvine up. because it's a really sunny day. I think it's just like the word just gets out, like yeah, like Snapchat and Messenger and stuff. We just get on the train and then just get some nice sun in, to be honest. We get about one day's sunshine a year in Glasgow, so that sense the reason uh, they, they make the most of it when it's out. Yes, it happens every year. Since it opened in 1879, the station has been the start or end point of millions of journeys. London, Euston to Glasgow Central. Greetings, reunions, people arriving, faces in a crowd. Ordinary faces, ordinary people. Central Station has long been Scotland's busiest. It's the northern terminus of the West Coast mainline from London. It's the starting point for travel to 181 stations in mainland Britain. Over the decades, the station has knitted itself into the lives of many people. For generations of Glasgow folk, particularly those that work here, Central Station has become part of the family. Hi, right, Brian. One, four, eight, seven, ten, He's married to the voice. The station. <laughs> yeah, see the voice here, the station? That's my wife. There's about nine of us in total. There's me, 
uh, my uncle Kev and my cousin Amy, we work for Network Rail. Uh, my cousin Becky, she works for Virgin. Uh, Brian works on the platforms for Virgin. Uh, my cousin Ali works on fixing the tracks. My aunt Karen, she's the voice of the station. My uncle John, he works in a uh, bar head station. And my aunt Angie works on the barriers. That was 10. We'll do a bit of everything. My father uh, was a driver. I came for a job, got an interview, got the job. Three months later, one of my sisters applied for a job. She got the job. The third sister didn't even get an interview. They phoned her up and asked her what size of uniform she was. <laughs> my dad worked in the railways, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. So um, it kind of is in your body and you, you kind of get it. Yeah. I'm in Glasgow Centre on the 11 years. It's more of a family than it is uh, a job. It gets under your skin. I think probably Jo and I are mum and dad. I suppose being the first female station manager at Glasgow Central, I've now taken the role of mother and he's father. There's a lot of camaraderie, the people are great, everybody all kind of works together. You want a concourse like that there just now? That means everything's flowing. Customers in, customers out, and everybody's happy, you know, including me. <laughs> Obviously, it's just got to be a case of monitoring the barriers. So if we get any large groups kind of going through there, we'll probably need to just kind of follow it around. Officer Wiley of the British Transport Police is trying to keep his cool. Temperature-wise, I'm probably a little bit on the hot side of life right now. Um, as you can see, we're below a glass roof, so... It ramps the temperature up a little bit and dressed in all black with a lovely black stab vest makes you feel nice and cool as always. What I'm wearing today, obviously, I've got my operational hat. That's followed by my TAC vest. It's a tactical operations vest. So just on the back of the plates here, I have a sponge layer. I think the manufacturer thought this would be for comfort. Unfortunately, in hot days, it just manages to keep heat and sweat and everything stuck nice and tightly to your body. It carries a number of things for myself. I've got my personal radio, my notebook, stop searching forums, and of course, hand sanitizer. This probably is in every cop's pocket. Unfortunately, people have a tendency to want to shake your hand at the worst moment. Not knowing where it's been, it's actually a bit of a godsend. I have a pair of handcuffs, I have my baton, and just slightly behind me, I don't know if you can see that, I have leg restraints. I think including the stab vest, it's probably around a stone to a stone and a half. So, yeah, to say it's a little bit hot is an understatement. Guys, is that air train's full? The next one's half a living, guys, if you just move back a bit. Just move back a bit, guys. Just move back a bit. Now. More teams are arriving at Central, keen to get to the coast. Where you going? Yep. Just move back. Hey, yeah. Just move back. How can he go through? We've been told the train's full, you'll go on the next one. Because he's going to pay the canal, I don't need to answer every single question. Half a living, guys. Move back, guys. Hey, I believe last year, nobody really had any idea it was going to happen, but um, this year we're operating a no alcohol policy on trains on this line. British Transport Police and station staff are working together on the annual Safer Shores operation, which takes a zero-tolerance approach to alcohol. What's that? Perfume? Yeah, it's perfume. Cool. OK. They've been spoken to, and if any of them had alcohol, uh, up to them, so if they want to put the alcohol in the bin, they can. But if they have alcohol on, on, on them, they can't travel by train. Drinking's illegal. There is a lot coming up the lift with alcohol, cos that's a fly move, so... One, one of you in the lift and one of you just kind of mobile. Just want to go back there, guys. Magic. Just check your bag. It's the end of their study leave, so they've had a, quite a, a hard month or so. No, we're not spoiling the party. We're actually making sure that they're safe. We're 
on the main concourse in Glasgow Central Station. Glasgow Central for me is the heart of the city. Central to Glasgow, that's Glasgow Central. Paul works for Network Rail and is the station's resident tour guide. I started working in Glasgow Central just over 20 years ago now as a customer service assistant. Fell in love with the place and I've been here ever since. I love the history of this building. At the time Glasgow Central Station was built, this place was at the forefront of the Industrial Revolution. This place was cutting edge. It was the epitome of Victorian virility. The biggest was the best. Isambard King of Brunel once said that he wanted to build cathedrals to worship the Iron Horse. Glasgow Central Station is to this very day our cathedral worshipping these iron horses that come and go from the busiest railway station in Scotland. If you look across at the buildings here, every single building in this station itself is rounded. And the reason for that was Donald Matheson, when he remodelled the station in 1901, his idea was for people to flow seamlessly through the station like water. If you look at the concourse itself, as we can see, there is an extreme gradient on the concourse. And the reason for that was a Victorian form of crowd control. If you put a hill on something, then people can take a step back and they can see how much their tickets cost. And that was the reason to spread the crowd here on the concourse. Simplistic, but effective for the times. This is one of the biggest glass roofs in Europe, this. There's 48,000 panes of glass in this roof. It's got a fancy name. It's a longitudinal ridged and furrowed roof. During the Second World War, when the German bombers come up the Clyde to try and bomb the shipbuilding industry, given that this is one of the biggest roofs in Europe, it must have stuck out with a sore thumb. So the railway company at the time came up with an ingenious idea. They painted every single one of these 48,000 panes black. The problem was, whenever a steam engine came into the station, it solidified the black paint that was on the glass. This made Central Station a very dark building for many, many years. After the war, the paint was removed, and in 1998, every single one of the 48,000 panes of glass was replaced. We're going up to the main roof of the station, just to make sure there's nothing causing us any concerns. So hopefully everything will be OK. If there is any issues, then I'll get it reported and get it sorted right away. The job of looking after the roof is one of many in Drew's portfolio. As station shift manager, the roof check has become one of his favourite routines. And I was at a puff climbing these stairs. You cannot film Glasgow Central without coming up to the roof. It's a vast size. The hairiest experience I've had, funny enough, was I was taking my station manager. So we were walking along, and all of a sudden, these seagulls started dive-bombing us. So it was a quick about turn and get out of here. Sorry for the noise in the background, but that's a station for you. As you can see, the drums on the station roof. So obviously, this area would need to be all cleaned. You've got to be very careful of that in the, the seagulls breeding season. Been in the railway 37 years now, 24 years coming up in Glasgow Central Station. I love working in the place. It's my wife says it's like my second home to me. So I'm mere, I'm mere in Glasgow Central Station. I think I'm on the house at times. But there you go. That's it. the views I come up for. Look at the view. Great day, sunny day. But that's the main junction coming in and out of Glasgow Central Station. And as they say, welcome to Glasgow. I've always said that Glasgow Central is a town within a city, and it is. It's, Glasgow Central is the same wee place. 
It has its moments, but it's just a pint of canny stay here all day. I've got no eager. My gaffers wouldn't be happy if I stayed up here all day. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to cut across to the far side. But basically, if I want to get our side, I'll just push it along. <laughs> And as you can see, world famous Argyle Street in Glasgow. One of the longest streets in Glasgow to take it to eat. And that see those guys. That's, I'm not scared. They're mental, it's Glasgow seagulls. <laughs> yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I don't want to bend down, I need to get back. There you go, you captured that. Perfect diamond. Get a wag coming. Don't upset the Glasgow seagulls because they don't like it. really not a big fan of the piano. When it first came in, I thought it was lovely, and you know, there was a lot of different music, but then you hear the same things every single day, and it does start to really grind your gears. <laughs> you get ones who don't, who don't play the piano at all, and just sort of go clink, 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 clink. Then you get ones who are semi-good, but then they only know the same four songs, so they just play them on a loop, and then you've got them next to you for three hours. Then you've got others who play the piano really, really loud and also kick the piano. I was finding it hard to listen to people and hear what they were saying and they couldn't hear what I was saying, so they end up shouting. And then when you shout, they play louder and... Yes. It's very frustrating. Can you go and give them a hand on the gates at 11 to 15? Aye, just the gates, just just now, because Tim's up here selling, so um, it's really busy up there just now, all right? Thank you. Sarah has been called in to help out with the afternoon shift. Mm, probably the next ten minutes or so, it will start to get really busy, um, because we had loads of people going down to the beach this morning, um, and because we are short-staffed, it'll be a bit of a challenge getting them through. This is my day off, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must be insane. <laughs> Where are you speaking today, folks? In the pubs. Right, OK. Right, OK. See for future reference, guys, all right? See the mainline ticket barriers here, all right? The Al... I'll... I've not stayed here for five years. No, listen. Just give me a wee second and I'll explain it to you. You're not in any trouble. Just a routine call assisting my colleagues for the barrier. Um, they thought there was maybe no ticket present, but as it turned out, the male and female did have tickets. They definitely had a little bit of summer cheer. Uh, they'd come up from Greenock to enjoy some of the, the public houses in Glasgow, and that combined with the massive milky bar that was all over the ticket and now my hands, I think they definitely accomplished that. But I'm going to go and check this train if that's all right. <laughs> After their day on the beach, the day tripping teams are returning home. Guys, this way. Move away, lads. Move away. Move away. I think last year, I, I don't mind saying it, I was probably a little bit open mouthed myself. Just keep yourself moving, buddy. As you can see, a lot of them are still in high spirits. You know, a lot of the kids that are going through, if they are in drink, you know, I need to think of a bigger picture. You know, if, if I allow you to go on your on, onward journey, you're going to be vulnerable, are you going to be at risk? It's not just about, you know, kind of ticking boxes, be making arrests on people. What beach were you on, Odwin? Was it busy? It's always nice to be beside the beach, isn't it? What? You got London, are you? Yeah, tickets to London, are you? Well, I've not got a ticket, my Oh, there you go, then. 
I think interaction with kids is about the first approach. So if you can go in and have a bit of, bit of laugh and a joke with them, it maybe keeps things friendly. If you approach it any other way, a bit of sun, maybe a bit of alcohol can tip things the opposite way, which we don't necessarily need. It's not a good result for us at the end of the day if we have to arrest a teenager. Guys, guys, what are you doing in here? Take yourself out. No, out. I think the early shift have, have played a blinder for us tonight. Um, I think with them taking the majority of the alcohol off of the youths travelling down towards the beach, I think what we're seeing in the return is kids who are probably in a better state than what they would have been had they travelled with alcohol. So, yeah, well done, the early shift. Glasgow Central attract upwards of 70,000 people a day, all walks of life. The railway can probably open your eyes from time to time with, with some of the people that you meet, which is interesting to say at least. The daily commute makes up a large part of the numbers travelling through Glasgow Central. But big events in and around the city can really boost numbers. It's a job for the A-team. So there's one queue tonight and it's this, is it? Colette is the travel shop manager. First up here for the machine, please. Yep. This weekend we've got Ed Sheeran playing at Hamden. So it's my job to make sure that these guys here standing in the queue get through efficiently as possible so that we can get these guys boarded onto the trains. They're sellouts every single night, so what we're expecting, crowd-wise, is like 10 to 14,000 people. John, who's the lead manager, has to make sure that he's got the regular like commuters that they're travelling to make sure that they got on their service as well as, well as all the concert goers. Anybody going to concert apart from number five? And so it begins. <laughs> John has been on the railways for 18 years. He's the station team manager for Motherwell, working at Central Station when there are big events to be managed. I love it. I love working the events. I love the railway anyway, but I love working the events. Eh? There'll be very few I've missed over my years in here, but I like working them. Anybody, ask a light, ask anybody, very same. I love the railways, but that's what we do it for. Don't worry about it. I'm the boss. Go on, when you go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's the boss. <laughs> oh, absolutely. He knows who's the boss. <laughs> we've worked together for 12, 13 years we've worked together, so we know exactly what each other does. We know exactly what each other are thinking, so we, we've, there's a really good team, a good bond there. Yeah, I've probably seen more of John than what I do my own husband. <laughs> right up the front, folks. There'll be space up the front of the train, hopefully. I've got Robert over here counting the 16, 15 for me. Yeah. I reckon we'll move between 10 or 12,000 people extra tonight. Once they've bought their ticket, we then put them into this system here, which we call the pen. We can then count up how many people that we know that we can board the train with. The Ed Sheeran event, combined with a busy Friday afternoon commute, causes a huge swell in passenger numbers. 25 extra trains, known as specials, have been added to the normal timetable. A system not without its complications. John, that is not the special in platform seven. Not the special. What is that in seven then? Is it 1806? That's 1806 and seven. At five o'clock at night, Glasgow Central film when people try to get home through the week and um, commuting. So we're trying to load people onto the trains for the event at the same time as people are trying to get home and that presents a challenge. Hi, sir. The train's full, sir. I know that, but I need to wait till this train goes out first and people just come through to wonder that. I'll get you onto the Carlisle train, don't worry about that. I'm going to try and move them onto the special, uh, but there are people who are trying to come through to go to Kilmarnock, but this train's ready to go, so I can't really let them through. So that will happen until this, the peak finishes about 6 o'clock. Sellers needed for the travel shop. 
the queues right outside this door. No, John, I'm down here myself. It's supposed to look like it's going to look clockwork. That's because that's we're really good at it, but that queue needs to move as quick as we possibly can get it moving. Make sure your ticket to the guys to get through the wide gate over there, please. Thank you. Over that side, guys. Show your ticket and walk through. So we're getting very, very busy now. Excuse me, excuse me. That train's full. You won't go on that train. Guys, excuse me. Train's full, guys. Hiya, first up here, please. When I came in, this machine here was out of order. That's a big deal for us. When one of these machines go down and we've got this queue in here tonight, we can't have that. So, on my clicker, I've got 4,600. My colleagues probably got about the same, so we're looking about 9,000 at the minute. Aye, aye. A lot of people, a lot of people. No staff has came down to assist. So far, we really do need, I would say, easily five or six yeah, uh, sellers down here to help us to get rid of this queue. There's a lot of commuters that are travelling home. You can see this is quite stressful. Guys, can you grab the platform, please? Look at these trains now. Look. Guys, can you make me up to the front of the train? The passengers may not know it, but there is a plan here. Right, stop them coming through that gate right now, please. Stop them through the gate. Right, Roger that. That train now will hold, will hold 600 people. When that's full, we'll then stop them and move them to the next train. We just keep the flow going. It's controlled boarding to make sure that people are coming up in an orderly fashion. That was a tough one. <laughs> Platform number nine now, guys. Organised chaos. <laughs> we just we make it work. But, uh, you know, it'd be hard, too hard to describe how, how we make it work, but we make it work. By seven o'clock, the Friday commute is over and most of the passengers are those heading to see Ed Sheeran. Welcome to Ed Sheeran, man. Of course I'm happy to be here. Do I look happy? I've had enough drinks. Of course I've had enough drinks, man. That's what you call good staff, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was some good, wasn't it? That was some good. There we go. <laughs> we always have a cuddle at the end. Oh, come on! <laughs> come on, I'm advancing years. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> right, I, I worked the hardest there. Looks like we're now half eight. The place is empty, Ed's on at nine, so I think we've, we've managed to get everybody up to the concert in time. That's the count's done for tonight, 13,000. Robert, what were we? 13,000? 13,384. 13,384, so that's quite a big event. Um, and the guys did well. <laughs> Friday night, and it's the end of a long week for staff and passengers. Roger that, I'll go and get them. Uh, Can you just make your way down to low level booking office? Thanks. Um, last thing at night, it's always really busy like this. We usually get like, loads of people just trying to run to get their last trains, but it's been absolutely manic tonight. For the returning Ed Sheeran fans, a late finish for the concert means that the last trains from Mount Florida don't arrive in Central until nearly midnight. When it gets to this time at night, if they've got time to get their tickets, we still send them to get a ticket, but if it's like two minutes before their train, or we just have a soft approach and get them away on the train so they're not stranded. You going on that Edinburgh train? Yeah. I don't even know if you'll catch it, guys. Yeah, just try to get everybody through home safe, but it doesn't always work out that way.
used a piano quite recently there, and I didn't think it would work, I've got to say that. When it, when it came in, I thought, I'm not sure if this is a good idea, you know, but no, it definitely is. Uh, the amount of people that actually use it is incredible. You know. Some of them are fantastic. <laughs> Do you know this song? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. People love, they, they feel the call of the music and they, maybe they are waiting for a train and they enjoy this moment. Like, it's such a, yeah, meeting point. I remember this place as, um, when I was a, a child, as, as, I don't even remember, I must have been in, in the pram. Central Station has been part of Christine's life since she was born. In the 50s, she used to visit her dad, James, when he worked on the long distance trains in and out of Glasgow. My dad left school at 14, and then he came into Glasgow Central one day and didn't have advertising for jobs. That would be 1934, probably. He worked his way up and uh, he was the manager of the train, but also he was the head waiter. And because my dad wasn't the real way, he would come home and he would smell. He would smell of the trains, he would smell of the station. I used to sniff, sniff his uniform, I loved it. <laughs> Her dad's job frequently took him into Grand Central Hotel. Opened in 1883 and originally housing the Malmaison restaurant, the hotel is a key part of the family history and one that Christine has been passing on to her son, Richard. Have you seen this picture? 1938, my grandpa was 21, so he would be just a young lad learning the ropes at that particular time. So this is obviously the before the war? Yes. There's another one here. He was the big boss. <laughs> that's a good picture. And yeah, that was when, um, before the train was ready to take off down to London. But that's how he met your grandma, mm -hmm. through... Um, are working in the Malmaison Hotel. Because they had to come over here to get the supplies for, for the train. We met each other and the rest is history. That's why you're here. <laughs> That's why you can understand why the Central Station and uh, the Central Hotel has always been a big part of, 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 of our life. Mm -hmm. This is my first time actually being really? actually inside the hotel. And so there are quite a lot of famous people like, yes. like in this hotel, yeah. yeah. One of the famous ones I can remember at the moment is Danny Kay, uh, Lena Horn. So many, many Hollywood A-listers, they, they, they would call them today. So they would perform in Liverpool, and then Grandpa would bring them back to Glasgow to perform here. And they all stayed in the, the Glasgow Central Hotel. They wouldn't have stayed anywhere else, because this was the, the hotel. Never, ever have I come into Central Station without thinking, without of, it. thinking of it. It's nice memories to have, though. Oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful as if you're it's part, it's part of the, the core of Glasgow. Fiercely proud. We love it. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And he's beautiful too. No, he's not, he's handsome. Do you want to hear me playing? <laughs> oh, I've missed it up. My dad tried to teach me. <laughs> he gave up. <laughs> Yeah, just run through this quickly. First special's ten past four. I think it might have been a Saturday as well. People start moving out that bit earlier. Mm -hmm. They certainly were yesterday, and that was a Friday. The problem I've got tonight is there's only three windows on tonight. Last night I had the four windows, so I really do need day sellers. 
Day two of the Ed Sheeran weekend, and John and Colette are back on duty. The queues are already building, and in an attempt to clear them, Colette recruits an experienced salesperson, herself. Not happy at this stage. Still not got the sellers that we've requested. Um, that's a bit of a letdown for us. I was outside there just checking the queue, and so far the queue is starting to go right out of Glasgow Central already, and we shouldn't have that queue outside the station. So, opening for business. Mic on. Close sign away. Good to go. That's it. Hi there, first time here, please. Welcome to the queue, up please. The hands in park, Mount Florida, Ed Sheeran. Let's go, party! <laughs> at a weekend, the crowds are more unpredictable and the bulk of the Ed Sheeran fans could arrive at any time. The challenge for us today could well be that because it is a Saturday, people have, have maybe been out earlier, uh, you know, have had a dinner, they've had a few you know, longer at the bars and a few drinks and that just uh, gives us something to watch. Right, guys, my record from here, my, my, uh, the years I've been doing it, was 15,000 up to a gig. So we're 13 and a half last night. So yeah, you could push that tonight. Right, four pounds forty. What, for two adults and two children? Yes. Right, yeah, come again. <laughs> Cheers. Is next, please? Anyone at all? No, clearly not. You know, must be must be my aftershave today. It's going a lot better than yesterday. Uh, that's because Colette's on, yes. She pushes you hard, which is a good person, deep down. I've got an excellent team in here, good banter. They're all kind of nuts in here, so that's, that's what we need for Glasgow Central. 4.40, please. When we're busy like this, we try not to look at the queue, because then we don't start getting panicky. Plus, the partners are pretty good today, so we're not getting a lot of hassle off them, because they're all in good moods. The concert's been cancelled. <laughs> oh, they're kidding. Oh, they're kidding. Oh, they're kidding. They're fine. It's, it's my age. I've got a bit of glasses on there. Um, I like a challenge, actually. Yeah, I do kind of enjoy it. If I kind of know how to sort it out, I do actually enjoy the challenge. Hello. You'll still be talking to sure. me. Um, some of them are a bit more challenging than others, right enough. But uh, 440, please. Thanks You're welcome. Cheers. We date quite a lot of awkward customers. Um, we have had incidents where people have punched the glass and threw things at us and threw things at the glass. But you just smile and go on, mate, because for every awkward one, you're going to get 50 or 60 that uh, you can have a bit of fun with. So you do get a good laugh. So everything that goes wrong is always my fault for some reason, Colette. But anyway, I can live with it, you know what I mean? Nice play. It's now 6.30 and the queues are only getting longer. A late influx of passengers means that there are still hundreds of Ed Sheeran fans to get onto trains. The ticket's are going through, thank you. John, he'll be under pressure, so he will, but he's, he's good at his job, so he'll get these guys moving quite quickly. Hiya. Anybody going to the concert, make your way down to the queuing system, please. As soon as that train and platform four goes, I'm just about to board the next special, and that'll clear the queue again, so. But as John coordinates the loading and departure of the special trains, a signal box error causes a truly special train to arrive unexpectedly on platform seven. Three to base over. Can you announce on platform number uh, eight for me, please? The passengers to move around to platform number five. The train is a Class 37 diesel restored by the Scottish Railway Preservation Society and specially chartered for today's journey. They brought this on the unexpected platform, so we have to move everybody down to platform number five. Guys, can you make your way down to platform five, OK? You were told to go... You came into platform eight. We were told to go to platform seven. That's a And now we're getting told to go to platform five. Shocking. British Rail. British Rail. No, no. I am the manager of this charter train. That train will not take you to Hamden. We were train. told to go over there and wait in platform yeah. eight. Yeah. You told us that. You told us to go to platform eight. Now there's a and change. Then
This train here is a private charter train going to Nielston. It's the first charter train to go to Nielston in over 40 years. It's all about railway enthusiasts who like to go to visit unusual places within the UK rail network. Oi! F*** off! Oi! Uh, this is a Class 37 locomotive uh, built back in the 1960s, I believe. They just make lots of noise and that's what the enthusiasts love about them. Modern trains like those over there, they're good, they've got all the facilities, but they're nothing beats travelling on a heritage train like that. Yeah, I just think the best thing is they look good, they sound good. It's proper big boy's toy, really. I don't know what, what got me into it, but it's very difficult to explain to others why I like it so much. And I've come up from London for the trip today, so that kind of explains. That was a bit of a span of the works, eh? The team had to kick into action and got all those customers, 400 or so around, on the platform five for the, for the where they moved the kit cap to, so it was a real, a bit of struggle with all there. The last special trains head out, the last few tickets have been sold and the station gets back to normal. It's time for Colette and her crew to head home. Now it's that kind of five to eight and no queue. Yes! Now the hard bit, trying to cash up. No extra sellers today, so the team worked really, really hard. I mean, my work here is now done, so um, poor John. John's shift continues and he heads for Mount Florida just a short 10-minute journey from Glasgow Central to cope with the crowds as they return to the city. Mount Florida was opened in 1886. Since a Genesis concert in 1987, it has seen millions of music lovers through its barriers. To avoid overcrowding on Mount Florida Station, the queue has to wait in the surrounding streets, in the open and in the rain. People aren't happy. It's been a bit of a hellhole. How long have you been here for? About two hours. Hour and a half. We went all around the car shop. Around the corner. Then they told us all the trains had stopped, so half the queue left and walked to Glasgow City Centre. Where are you going? Where are you going? Three, two, three. Go ahead. The police give you any kind of feedback on the uh, back of the queues? John, please call and tell me it's about a mile away from the bottom of my Caskin View Road. Okay, it's all the five trains, that'll be fine. No. Oh, the secret here is to get as many on the trains as we can get on the trains, to stop them leaving in time. It's all right, it's no crime watch. <laughs> no, Joy, what do you think of Ed Sheeran? It was good, like, yeah, I had a, ni a nice night in that. Was that, a, was that a good yeah, it gig? It was worth the travel, like. Was it? Where did you travel from? Inverness. All the way to Glasgow, Fred Sheeran. Aye, aye. I would have bought a CD. I know, I know. To be fair. I know, I know. But, yeah, I'm not an Ed Sheeran fan, as you can tell. Not my cup of tea, I don't think. I'm on my way back to Glasgow to our worst later. My feet are killing me, but I don't care. Happy guys. All aboard. Luxury seat in the front. Pull him up here. Hold on, 
our evening done. Took just under 5,000 back. Went forward to my shower my bed. It was the Caledonian Railway Company that first operated trains in and out of Glasgow Central. The company built the station on the site of Grahamston, a densely populated area of the city. In 1873, the company gained parliamentary authority for the station's construction, and three years later, the village of Grahamston was destroyed. Norrie has become a self-taught expert on the area's history since hearing about the place when he was young. Well, we're in Hope Street now, and this is where the western boundary of Grahamston was. And over to the right here, um, where the station now exists, it would just be a range of different kinds of industrial buildings, commercial buildings, maybe one or two domestic dwelling houses. Nearly 2,000 people at one time living in Grahamston, uh, a very, very busy area right at the heart of Glasgow's commercial trade. At the heart of Grahamston was Alston Street, running right through what is now the station concourse. It was the site of a grain store, Carter's Yards and a gas works. All of these wiped from the map. Only two original Grahamston buildings remain. So behind us, we've got the Grand Arms, which is one of the two remaining Grahamston buildings. It was originally a, what they call a Mottman's Cottage, which is a, a microbrewery in today's terms. And then the, the, the present building was built on that site. And Alston Street ran up just to the left of that as you're looking across the street. The saddest part, really, of Grahamston being demolished was that uh, the central station should have been built not where it is now, but probably at the corner of Waterloo Street and Hope Street, just, just up here. That was a vacant site. There were only one or two farmhouses on it, so that could so easily have been used as a site for central station. But disputes over planning permission and arguments between the Caledonian Railway and other private rail companies meant that the vacant lot wasn't used. The vast majority of people would have had no protection and they would have virtually no compensation or no rights. So they would really just have been told to go. In order to cope with increasing traffic from south of the border, the existing bridge across the River Clyde had to be strengthened, allowing passengers to reach the heart of the city. Well, before they built Central Station, the trains from England and points south would come to Bridge Street Station, which was over on the other side of the river. So this is when they built these pillars here that held up the tracks. And then they, of course, were found to be inadequate for the amount of traffic using the area. And that's when, of course, they extended the station and built this massive edifice all the bridges and tracks to carry the trains into the city centre. So the idea behind it, of course, was to link Glasgow to the rest of the United Kingdom and further afield. So this is very much adding to Glasgow's uh, commercial success and unfortunately, that was at the expense of Grahamston and the people who lived and worked there. Another shift for Colette starts with her reading some of the negative reviews of her yesterday's performance. Basically, it's, it's saying chaos at Glasgow Central. Travellers were also disappointed at the long queues for tickets, lack of extra carriages and lack of extended services for those heading to the concert, which we know, yes, there was lots of crowds had came in, but we also know that the crowds all came in at the last minute. For, for my team at the ticket office, the queues were, they were massive. Not one of my team had complained, but 
reading the tweets, you, you feel really quite down about it because when you're coming into your work and you're trying your best, you're trying, you know that you're you're going to have, I mean, thirteen and a half thousand people to take through within roughly about a couple of hours. That's a massive achievement for us to do. When customers come up and they're disgruntled and they are annoyed at us, you can't take it personally because it's the company that these the, the customers get in that. And you, that's how you've just got to cope with. You just can't take it personally, you've just got to cope with it. It's approaching rush hour and Gary is on the lookout for passengers that might need a hand. Yeah, I've been driving the buggy for about a year and a half. The best thing about driving the buggy is not having to walk about everywhere. It's a lot easier than driving a car. I've never hit anyone, but... Definitely peak times is the most interesting time to be on the buggy because it's so busy. And because of the noise of the buggy, you'd expect people to hear it, but they just stand in front, and then you need to eventually get out of the buggy and tap them on the shoulder and say, even I don't hear it anymore, I'm just so used to the noise. Hi, Ange. Is that Ange? This is my Aunt Angie, another family member. Little Auntie Angie. Little Aunt Angie. <laughs> Gary's got a really, really infectious personality. He's had this since he was a wee boy. He's just very witty and he's great with the passengers. Everybody loves you. As the Glasgow workforce head for home, it's a busy time for the staff at Glasgow Central. There you go, darling. They'll be waiting on the Edinburgh train, so basically as soon as it opens, as soon as it comes on the screen, we then start opening the barriers for them. That's them opening the doors now. Some people get a wee bit impatient, but at the end of the day, the train's not going to move until it's due to go out. <laughs> There's no point in getting worked up. I think that's the biggest thing in this job, is keep yourself calm. When we first get trained up within the railway, they tell us that it's the badge that they're angry at. And I get that, I understand that. But when you're here on the shop floor, it gets personal. Um, people have been chased down on Facebook. Once they get your name, they stalk you down and chase you down. It's been done before, it's a scary thing, and all because we never let them on a train without a ticket. Uh, this is uh, set number 7, the 1718. We're going to detach it and reattach it. On platform 7, Derek is preparing the 1718 to Edinburgh for departure. He's discovered that there's a problem with the brakes. Because we can't get brake release on the train, it can't move. We get, usually it's 99.9%, .9 it's fine. It's at me 0.1%. The first and foremost thought is to get the passenger home, because you get more, you move more passengers in a train than you move in a transport. So we could take up up to three to four to five hundred people, even six hundred people on a train. So you imagine if that was to go down and we lose more services because that is down, then we will knock on the rest of the day or maybe could be thousands of people left in the station. And that has happened in the past. Touch wood, it doesn't happen too soon. The knock-on effects of this train running late will be huge. If it doesn't run at all, that will mean hundreds of unhappy passengers. This train's in jeopardy of being cancelled now. That's now 13 minutes late nearly. To get to a point, it affects all the parking time within the stations. So it's going to be a, a call on it soon, but I need to see the fire. So I'm trying to find them, that's why I walked up and down, guys. So I don't think I'm just wondering about getting the fresh air. <laughs> Edinburgh one? Oh. Yeah, it's been delayed, sir. Oh. It's George, what's the update? Oh, good to go. Right, good to go. Fortunately, the problem seems to be solved. It's a good result for an Edinburgh train, because if that one had cancelled, that's one of our busiest trains of the night. So uh, you're probably best about 300 people on that train. They'd have been detrained de between 1803, which is already busy. So it causes a bit of bother. So it's quite good to get this one away. This is Control's not ecstatic about it because it's so late leaving. It will cause problems up the line. But we'll pick up our intermediate passage on the way who should get to where they're going. So it does help us out. But today, is just not Derek's day. Oh. Not happening. Not happening. Jackie, what's the issue? Try to get the brakes off, Derek. 
Uh, it's going to be cancelled. We know we're going to cancel it now. Give me a sec. That was me being too optimistic. The brakes are still not working. This train isn't going anywhere. Cancel. Cancel all together. So that'll cause us problems now because we've got the 1803 I've seen in 1816. They're already busy. So we're not going to invest. We're sitting on that for 25 minutes. Just bad luck, to be honest with you, for us out of the day. But this will go now get checked out at the depot. We can only do what we can do. Unfortunately, that's just bad luck for us today. As the summer continues, the sun keeps shining, Central Station keeps working. Passengers in, passengers out, minute on minute, hour after hour until the end of the day, and the few brief hours when the station's gates are closed. The station's closed, guys, just close the gates. I'm here to drive the train. Doubt it. Next time, the heat continues to cause problems. If the points are out, we can't run trains. It's like a bottleneck, and that backlog can even run right back to as far as England. Floyd works hard to keep passengers safe. You do have to trust them. They're basically putting your, your life in his hands. And Paul shares a few lost secrets of the station's past. This is definitely the land that time forgot for Central Station down here. And Inside Central Station continues next Sunday at the same time, here on BBC Scotland. <laughs>